of the main reasons that the original trilogy Star Wars movies lent themselves so perfectly to being adapted into a toy line was the wide variety of different products that Kenner could create. From mini action figures to spaceships to giant play sets and of course, creatures. And when I say creatures, I don't mean these guys. These are aliens. I'm talking about the creatures that some characters ride and the ones that eat people. And in today's video, we're taking a look back at all the creatures released in the original Kenner Star Wars toy line. So stay tuned. Come with me toy fans. This video is proudly brought to you by Valiverse, the creative company behind the most exciting new action figure range available on the market today, Action Force. Make sure you visit the Valiverse.com website to purchase your amazing Action Force comics, toys and other products. And follow Valiverse on YouTube, Instagram and Facebook to keep up to date with the latest product news. All the links are in the description below. Shop Valiverse, because it's time for action. Hey toy fans, my name is Tony and welcome back to the Analog Toys YouTube channel where we're obsessed with bringing you the true history of vintage toys and action figures. The Kenner Toy Company first introduced their massively popular range of 3 3 quarter inch scaled Star Wars action figures and toys in 1978. And some could argue that the first creature they ever created was released during this inaugural year. Packed in with the Death Star playset, Kenner gave us the Dinoga Trash Monster. All we saw of this creature in Star Wars was some tentacles and its periscope eye that popped up out of the dirty trash compactor water. So I guess Kenner had to imagine what the rest of the creature looked like, and they designed the Dinoga to have four fin-like appendages and a mouth that is located at the base of its neck. The Dinoga is manufactured in all green using a flexible plastic, and its design does not allow it to sit upright on a display shelf. It just kind of rocks over from one side to the other. Most of the early Star Wars designs have a quite simplistic charm to them, but when it comes to the Dinoga Trash Monster, this is little more than an accessory and an easy pass for a Star Wars creature collection, unless of course you're trying to complete the Death Star playset. In 1979, Kenner released the first bona fide Star Wars creature toy, the Patrol Dewback. Long before George Lucas began endlessly re-editing the original trilogy of movies, the Dewback that appeared on screen was an animatronic creation that the onset crew in Tunisia failed to get working, and we wouldn't see a moving Dewback until the Star Wars Special Editions were released in the mid-90s. Kenner's Patrol Dewback is one of my favourite toys in my Star Wars collection because it has such a unique look, and the green colour really pops on a display shelf. The Dewback comes with a brown saddle and reins which has been manufactured from flexible plastic and there is a spring-loaded trapdoor on the creature's spine that can be used to accommodate a riding action figure. All four of the Dewback's legs can be articulated, but the most interesting play feature here is that the head and tail are connected, so when you manipulate the tail, the Dewback's head moves from side to side. Now from Kenner's Star Wars collection, it's the Patrol Dewback action figure sold separately. Let's find the droids, Dewback! You can imagine you're a stormtrooper on the patrol Dubak, searching for R2-D2 and C-3PO. Look both ways, Dubak! By moving his tail, you can make Dubak's head turn left and right. You can move his legs, too. He found us! Good work, Dubak! The new Star Wars Patrol Dubak from the Star Wars Collection. Action figures each sold separately by Kenner. The next creature offerings from Kenner were based on designs from the Star Wars sequel, The Empire Strikes Back. Both the Tauntaun and the Wampa were creatures that appeared on the ice world of Hoth with the Tauntauns being ridden by the Rebels and used to patrol the areas surrounding the secret base. I really enjoy the overall design of the Tauntaun, both in the film and in toy form. Looking something like a cross between a kangaroo and a mountain goat, the Tauntauns move around on their powerful hind legs and use their strong tails to maintain their balance, just like a kangaroo. The toy version of the Tauntaun features articulation at the hind legs and at their much smaller forward limbs. This creature also has a nicely sculpted head with a pair of horns that are moulded in brown plastic, which contrast well against the Tauntaun's grey fur. Over my many years of collecting I've also noticed that the horns come in many different shades of brown, and it's nice to have a couple of variations in your display as it makes the creatures look somewhat unique from each other. Just like the Patrol Dewback, the Tauntaun also comes with removable saddle and reins and the spring-loaded trapdoor used to carry the rider. Kenner's original version of the Tauntaun was released in 1980, and it featured a solid belly. But for the 1982 reissue of the toy,
Ken revised the Torn Torn to include an open belly rescue feature, so children could reenact the scene where Han Solo cuts open the creature's belly with a lightsaber, so he can revive a nearly freezing Luke Skywalker by stowing him in the animal's warm belly. I thought they smelled bad on the outside. It's quite a strange idea for a toy when you think about it, but I certainly had a lot of fun with my open belly torn torn when I was a child. The Wampa is a snow beast that attacks Luke Skywalker and drags him back to his icy cave, with the intent of making a meal out of our hero. But after using the Force, Luke manages to turn the Wampa harmless. I mean, armless. Released in 1982, I've always found the sculpting on the Wampa toy to be a little bit subpar for the time and his elephant-like feet make it very challenging to get the toy to stand up without wobbling or falling over. The inclusion of spring-loaded arms on the Wampa toy was a fun idea, where the tension would be used to securely hold an action figure in its grip. Alas, the Wampa is also remembered for one of the most annoying toy commercials in the Star Wars line, where the kid actor just keeps repeating the word Wampa over and over again. Easy, Tauntaun. What is it? Wampa! Wampa! New Tauntaun, Wampa, and action figures each sold separately. Han Solo, help! Oh no, it's got Luke! Wampa! Watch it, Tauntaun! Gotcha! New Tauntaun comes with an open belly rescue feature. You'll be okay, Luke, as soon as I chase away that thing. Wampa! Wampa! New Tauntaun and Hoth Wampa and other action figures each sold separately from Kenner Star Wars The Empire Strikes Back collection. By the time The Return of the Jedi movie was released in 1983, Kenner had dramatically improved their design capabilities with this line giving us two of the best creatures in the entire range. First off, we have Jabba the Hutt, a toy that was advertised as an action playset, but despite that, he is a giant creature and worthy of inclusion in this video. Just like he did with Yoda in The Empire Strikes Back, George Lucas proved yet again that he enjoyed subverting audience expectations of a character using size. Back in 1980, no one expected the legendary Jedi Master Yoda to be three foot tall, and in 1983, I don't think anyone expected Jabba the Hutt to be a giant slug either. <laughs> Kenner's Jabba the Hutt came with a very accurate screen likeness, and when a child rotated his upper torso, his tail would swing from side to side. Jabba sits proudly upon his throne smoking his shisha, and is accompanied by his pet palace creature, Salacious Crumb. His throne also includes a slave collar that can be attached to the neck of most action figures. It's just a shame that the conservative attitudes of the early 1980s decided that young boys shouldn't have a Princess Leia slave girl action figure. I know I wanted one, so thank God for Stan Solo creations. The Jabba the Hutt action playset came with one other cool but very frustrating play feature. By turning the monster heads on Jabba's throne, the prisoner gates would open and your rebel action figures could be trapped inside. But in order to use this play feature, Jabba had to get off his throne, and that isn't how it happened in the movie. Overall, Kenner's Jabba the Hutt toy remains a masterpiece of early 80s toy sculpting and looks fantastic displayed as the centerpiece of a vintage Return of the Jedi toy collection. The final creature toy to be released by Kenner is not only one of the best Star Wars toys ever made, it's just a fantastic toy in general. The Rancor is the fearsome towering monster that Jabba kept in his dungeon and the Crime Lord would routinely feed people to the creature whenever they stepped out of line. <laughs> Kenner's Rancor toy stands approximately 10 inches tall and has a terrific sculpt for the time that really captures its on-screen likeness. The Rancor has articulation at the hips, shoulders and wrists and features a spring-loaded button in its spine that allows manipulation of the Rancor's bottom jaw so the monster can munch away on his prey. I'm pleased this fun feature was included with the toy but the Rancor's mouth doesn't open wide enough to eat the Gamorrean guard like he did in the movie so you're better off feeding him smaller figures such as a Jawa or an Ewok. The Rancor monster's hungry again. Let's feed him. Don't do it. Luke Skywalker, Gamorrean Guard, new Rancor monster and Rancor Keeper action figures, each sold separately. You'll regret this. <laughs> Wait till he gets his claws into a Jedi Knight. Whoa, some jaws. This is my only chance. <laughs> He's wounded. We better get in there. <laughs> oh, he'll never get out alive, Gamorrean Guard. New Rancor monster. Action figures, each sold separately. From Kenner's Star Wars Return of the Jedi Collection. This is an impressive lineup of creature toys created by Kenner, but they didn't produce every creature that appeared in the original trilogy movies. And while I don't mourn the omission of the Minox or the giant space worm from The Empire Strikes Back, there was one creature featured in the first Star Wars film that got more screen time than the Dewback, but was never afforded a toy incarnation. The Bantha looks something like a woolly mammoth, 
and these creatures are ridden across the sands of Tatooine by the Tusken Raiders. And while Kenner did have plans to produce this toy in 1986, this would never eventuate because the line was cancelled in 1985. But lucky for us, Stan Solo Creations has come to the rescue with their Kenner-inspired toy version of the Bantha. And I'll be reviewing that toy in the Star Wars Creature Feature Part 2. Please consider supporting us on Patreon, where you can get access to tons of extra content that's not available anywhere else. The link is in the description of this video. I'm Tony from Analog Toys, and I'll see you next time.